The University of Hohenheim is located near Stuttgart in the south of Germany. It is composed of three faculties, the ones of Agricultural Sciences, Natural Sciences and Business, Economic and Social Sciences. It is the most prestigious university in terms of Agricultural Sciences in Germany and will soon celebrate its 200 years of existence. Within the research groups of the Institute of Agricultural Engineering is the group of tropics and subtropics under Professor Müller. The group is working on technology research to improve the efficiency of water and energy use. In the same way, it works with strategies for the management of renewable energies applied to the different processes of post-harvest. Hello, my name is Victor Torres Toledo. I'm a researcher at the University of Hohenheim in the Institute of Agriculture Engineering in the tropics and subtropics. I work here since five years in the topic solar milk cooling. And it's a pleasure for me to introduce you our working area. For our milk cooling system, we use two kilogram ice blocks. This is the best way to store a cold energy to be used on farm or during transportation. To produce those ice blocks, we use a conventional refrigerator, but this refrigerator needs to be adapted. Uh, from one side, uh, we need um, to install a fan so that the heat transfer inside the refrigerator is enough to create the amount of ice that we want to produce daily, which is around 16 kilograms per day. And the other adaptation that the refrigerator needs is a special control unit. This control unit substitutes the standard control unit of this refrigerator. This control unit um, is known as adaptive control unit. The control unit knows if there is solar radiation available and then we can command the compressor uh, speed and the fan uh, speed. This means we can produce during uh, solar radiation hours, we can produce um, ice at a maximum power, then in the evening we can use the surplus energy to produce ice at a lower compressor speed uh, in an efficient way, and at night the refrigerator is commanded to a sleep mode. This sleep mode conserves the whole amount of ice, which is 50 kg. Uh, it is conserved uh, because the refrigerator is commanded to work at zero degrees. This means with the system you have a natural autonomy up to four days because of the ice storage inside. So the batteries are only used to balance the energy of the day, but they are not used for the autonomy. For the autonomy, we have the cold storage in form of ice blocks. As you can see, the system uses conventional PV modules, 600 watt peak, um, lead acid batteries, uh, 60 amperes uh, hour each, and conventional charge controllers. The design of PV modules and batteries is done in a way that for each location, the cost of ice, kilogram ice, is minimized. We decided to use batteries because if you use batteries, you can use the surplus energy of the day to produce more ice in the beginning of the evening. In this way, you can produce up to 35% more ice per day. But the system is also suitable to work without batteries. We think that our research and our work here only makes sense if we are able to develop systems that are available at the target countries at a feasible price. That's why we develop also systems that can be produced locally. An example is here a refrigerator that is done with a cooling engine where our control unit is also integrated. You see here the compressor and inside, uh, you can see the evaporator. Uh, this refrigerator that can be produced locally has the same performance at the commercial, as the commercial one. Hi everyone, my name is Ana Salvatierra. I come from Bolivia. I'm studying and working at the University of Hohenheim. 
Among the work that I'm doing in, at the university, I'm collaborating in different projects, and one of them is the solar mill calling. After the results gained in Tunisia, we have transferred this technology and this knowledge in the conditions in Kenya, and from there we have also transferred all the information to Colombia. From the initial work done in Tunisia, it was being worked the concept of cooling during transport. So in this case, um, milk cans were manufactured at our installations and the system consists of having the milk can insulated and have a nice compartment that was placed in this way. So then farmers were capable to transport the milk from the farm to the collecting point. From the result gathered from Tunisia, it, farmers were complaining about the weight of the system. So for the reason what we did, it was some improvement on the system and it was separated the insulation from the milk can. And as you can see, we have opted for having a commercial milk can where we have just add this ice compartment and we separate the insulation. And as you can see, this is a very practical way to utilize the system and then also to transport the system. However, in the work in Kenya, there other adaptations were done. Milk collection in Tunisia is centralized, where cars go farm to farm and collect the milk cans. For the reason our system was well accepted in the region. In the case of Kenya, the situation was different. We have taken the milk can metal and, and then we have opted for a second option that is a plastic milk can that is food grade, due to the metal milk can as are very expensive. In the case of the plastic milk can, we have done the same transformation. So we have prepared a ice compartment, use um, commercial milk can, and at the same time, what we have done with the insulation. So instead of having the insulation, we have used a removable jacket that we have provided with a zipper, where it can be easily removed when then the milk can is need to be cleaned. The milk cooling system works as follows. So we have our milk can where milk is introduced and then the ice compartment is placed inside. So after we have the milk can assembled, what we do is place the ice inside of the ice compartment. It's very important to have the relation of ice in regards to the relation of milk. So for example, if we are transporting the milk for about six hours, 30 liters of milk and six kilo of ice will preserve the quality of the milk. In the case that we are storing the milk, so another ratio is considered. So in this case, 20 liters of milk and 8 kilo of ice will preserve the quality of the milk for about 12 to 16 hours. For our project in Colombia, what we have done is to merge information that we gathered from Tunisia and Kenya, and then we have used the metal milk can. So for this metal milk can, we haven't used our normal insulation, so we have adapted the insulation of the plastic milk can that was experienced in Kenya. So in this way, it's how the evaluation in Colombia was done, and it was providing a successful result. Hello, my name is Florian Menner. I'm here from Germany and I'm studying agricultural science at the University of Hohenheim. I'm a scientific assistant of the Institute here and from Victor and Anna. And I've been working here since January 2017. And I help Victor and Anna for their, from their scientific work to support them with the um, technical stuff here, the experiments in the climate chamber. And uh, last year, from October to February this year, I was responsible for the development project in Colombia. So here we have our climate chamber. We can simulate climatic conditions in several countries and several places of the world. Um, we have a, he a heater inside and a fan. And here we simulate the temperature and uh, the solar radiation we simulate with a PV simulator where we can give a different um, PV power 
uh, to our system. So with that simulated climatic conditions, uh, we are doing experiments with our system. Uh, for example, testing uh, the daily ice production of the freeze of our system. And here inside the freezer, so we are producing ice and we have sensors here connected to the ice or for measuring uh, the ice temperature or the temperature here inside and also ambient temperature to compare the different, uh, different uh, temperatures and to um, estimate the ice production in different conditions. So here at the charge controller, um, first here is connected the consumer, the freezer here in this uh, case. Then here we have the batteries connected and here comes the simulated PV power from the PV simulator outside. So here outside the climate chamber we have the PV simulator. This simulates uh, the PV power or the power that comes normally from the PV panels. And this is controlled by a computer program called MATLAB, where we can um, simulate uh, the PV power and also um, the temperature inside the climate chamber. Hello everyone, my name is Kilian Blumenthal. I come from Germany and I study at the University of Hohenheim Agricultural Sciences in the Tropics and Subtropics. For half a year now I work together with Victor and Anna as a research assistant and I mainly support them in their research by running experiments in the climate chamber or by the production for example of the ice compartments for the milk cans. In March 2018 I had the opportunity to go to Kenya where I coordinated the installations of two solar milk cooling systems in the northwestern part of the country. So here we are in the metal workshop. What we are mainly doing here is we have these plates of stainless steel and after cutting, bending and welding them we have our final product which are our ice compartments where we put the ice in. Hello everyone, my name is Farah Mrabat from Tunisia. I'm a PhD student at the Institute of Agriculture and Engineering in the Tropics and Subtropics. My PhD topic is the holistic assessment of the solar milk cooling system. I started with the team two years ago when they were working in Tunisia for the introduction of the system on the field for the first time. And afterwards I got more engaged in other projects such as powering agriculture in Kenya. We started the milk quality assessment two years ago when we started our work in Tunisia. As you know, in Sidi Pouzid, for example, the conditions are pretty hard when it comes to the temperature. For example, in August, we have temperatures that can reach 40 degrees. And this is very problematic for the farmers because the milk can spoil under such temperatures. When we compare the cold and the uncooled milk, we can see that with our system, we can preserve the quality of the milk with temperatures such as less than 17 degrees while the uncooled milk is usually totally spoiled. I've done the same test for the overnight storage, which usually takes more than 14 hours. And we've seen that the milk quality was preserved with our system, while of course the uncooled milk was totally destroyed and spoiled. We all know that cooling the milk doesn't improve the quality. What it does is just preserve the initial state. So at the end of the day, if we want to have a good quality milk, we should think about having a good hygienic standards on farm level because at the end, cooling should go hand in hand with good hygienic standards.